All right, thanks. Uh, so we are here for a regular meeting of the Lake County Board of County Commissioners, uh, Tuesday, January 16th, 2024, at 11.05 a.m. on the computer. Um, sorry for starting late, but we had a work session uh, that was good and productive. Um, so go ahead, uh, please turn off cell phones, silence anything noisy, and we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance for the moment. Thanks. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you, everyone. Um, go to approval of the agenda. Um, Fellow commissioners or staff, is there anything that needs to be removed or change the order? Not that I know. No. Doing good. Okay. Then I'll ask for a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Great. Thank you. Uh, any further comments? No. no. So call for a vote on the motion on the table. Aye. 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 So we approve the agenda. Um, community information items, uh, none for me. Yeah. Um, none for me either. I, well, I guess um, I'll just share that the, the school <clears throat> district has been working with uh, the district accountability committee and the finance committee, um, getting those uh, back up and standing. The DAC is a statutory obligation of the district. It's been defunct for a few years. Um, and so we're going through school performance frameworks now. They are public meetings and our information is available on the district website. Okay. Um, I have just, we are, I'm working with emergency management and our partners to send out a letter to subdivisions along County Road 17 and um, possibly four, working with our partner and team Rubicon. They're gonna come out for five days in July and do some fire mitigation. So we're letting folks know that that'll be happening, primarily focused on County Road 17 right of way um, along the county road. And we're also looking for interest in folks um, who might wanna have team member come on their personal properties to do some mitigation. They are able to do that and they've had a lot of success in um, a couple other communities that they've worked in and come back to year after year with that interest increasing. So hoping to, um, establish a nice uh, relationship and uh, resource through Team Rubicon. Very appreciative of that. Cool. Great. Thanks. Okay, uh, now I'll ask for public comment. And again, this is for items not on the agenda. Um, okay, uh, one in the room, yeah, please yeah, state your name. And, Hi, yeah. uh, my name is Jan Morzell. I live in twin lights most of the time um, since I also attended for people on the, on the zoom meeting the, the work session I just wanted to quickly um, uh, mention something I had emailed everybody very late not also realizing that yesterday were, of course was the holiday and that the last town hall meeting was just uh, you know a week ago and, and it gave us just very little uh, time to talk among the residents and businesses of Twin Lakes and what several of us are proposing is just like you are creating the community housing overlay to exclude certain areas from an increase in licenses, to so please consider the town of Twin Lakes is an area where there should not be any limits. And so I gave you a little uh, map that I drew by hand, and I just realized on my key I left out the colors. So you can color them in yourself, see whether you get it right. And But the point is really, it's a very small area. You can see that about six blocks where you have maybe 40 structures. And you have uh, the business, of course, that you're familiar with, which are in black. You have right now in town, what I call town, only seven short-term rental licenses. You have, surprisingly to me too, you have nine long-term renters. You have uh, four in purple. Uh, long-term uh, property owners that live there year-round. All of them, by the way, are landlords. And then you have um, 
you have seven part time owners. Mostly the houses are actually not winterized. Um, there's one house for sale, and then there are some structures that haven't been colored in because they are deserted and nobody's living there. They are certainly not winterized. Uh, for reference, there's also the uh, schoolhouse and the fire station. And so, um, whatever you do, it is very small, but it happens to be that several of us, I would say arbitrarily, were left off the existing list. One of us had a license, and he was informed it was the wrong license, even though he is a new septic field. And he was told, no, he cannot renew it, and he had to actually stop renting for, for the, the length of the moratorium, so that had quite a bit of impact on him. Also, I think really the Twin Lakes Village is really the hub for visitors, and it already is with the lodges. And I think in particular for uh, hikers, they still need accommodations, including there is no place for a hiker, for example, to fill up a water bottle because it's restricted. Anyway, that was a short thing, and you have the map, and I would love to meet with you, and here are the color guides. Thank you very much. Yeah. If Th you have any questions. Thank you, Anand. Yeah, and then we'll make sure that staff also get that, and yeah. that it's, you know, as, as was mentioned in the work session, we'll be continuing to take public comment, including yours, uh, so it will it'll be in the mix. Uh, anyone else in the room for public comment? I don't think so. Anyone online on the Zoom call for public comment? Not seeing that. Peter, you're unmuted, but I don't. No, okay. Uh, so let's move on to the regular agenda. Item number one. Um, Lake County Sheriff's Office, State of the Union. So he, Speckman, please, the floor is yours. Is it possible to pull it up on the... Sure, is it, is it in Teams? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. You can you can start if you are ready and I'll okay. all right. Okay. There's a um if you could go to menu yeah and then view full screen and then full screen mode. Sure. All right. There we go. All right, well thanks for your time this morning. Uh just would like to go over our 2023 year. It's in the books now. Um, as expected, a lot of this has just been a juggle of maintaining the day-to-day -day calls, being there for the community, dealing with personnel, and then also working on the overall improvement of the office and our growth. So um, if you go to the, the next screen, what we'll go over is uh, that. Uh, we'll go over those different items today. Um, I do want to hover over this for a second. This kind of just guides us every day, you know, our mission, vision, and values. Um, I will read our mission statement is to start each day with a purpose to provide the residents and visitors of Lake County with the highest level of righteous public safety services that gives everyone the opportunity to fully enjoy a peaceful life. That's kind of rooted everything in all our directions. And it's important for me to put in there the part where we start each day because we go through a lot in this career field. And that's just something that we've pushed out to the staff is just to make sure that, you know, we'll, we'll acknowledge what happened yesterday, but today is a new day. And let's, let's go out there and do what we're supposed to do. In our vision statement, um, we, we listed out what our ultimate goals are although they may be unrealistic. <laughs> um, but it's something that we strive for every day. So in our leadership aspect, I, I threw in there boldly, we want to be a premier agency. And I know that's taking uh, a huge step, but that does give me at least uh, that long-term vision that I'm trying to implement here is what does it take to be a, a top-level agency? 
Um, we also want to create partnerships within the community. And the key word there is prevention. Um, we respond to calls and it's that means it's already happened. And that's what we would like to do is prevent that from happening. Um, and we believe one of the better ways to do that is through partnerships through the community because we can't be everywhere at once. Um, we do also believe that that comes through our relationships that with the people of Lake County. Um, and then just the, uh, the direction that we have seen over the past few years is everybody wants to know what we're doing. Um, so we strive to make sure that everybody knows what we're doing. It's all recorded, it's accessible. We wanna make sure that this type of information is put out to the public. And then our core values, we simplify just to integrity, service, and excellence. Integrity is first uh, because our honesty is imperative to uh, everything we do. People trust us, we have a high level of responsibility, and if we're not leading our actions through integrity, uh, then we lose that trust. So I feel like that's a foundational piece for building trust. Also, this is a service-related career field that whoever engages in this has that in their heart to serve, and we want to make sure that we're acknowledging that. And then we end with excellence just to say that just doing the job by itself is not enough. We want to go above and beyond. Uh, next, please. You can read this in your own time, but just a, a, a few key points that I wanted to pull out of uh, my situational report for 2023. Um, it's just I, I acknowledge my responsibility as a public servant. The role of sheriff is for the, the safety of our community um, and that we're working towards baseline. Our goal is to get this office to a foundational level so we can structure this to, to, to last for generations to come. Um, I also acknowledge that our staffing levels still aren't uh, to the point where we can fully serve our community, and we'll go over some of those numbers later. Um, but it's also important to note that just the wide variety of tasks that these deputies have to handle from split second decisions, one moment to the next moment where you're just sitting on somebody for 12 hours trying to calm them down. So it's that variety that we have to deal with that um, happens day to day. Um, you can click over. A uh, quick review of our budget. Uh, we managed a $3.2 million budget between the Sheriff's Office General Fund, our dispatch center, and detentions. And um, I apologize, can't really see that, but the, the yellow represents salary and wages, which as you can see, consumes most of each department's budget. And we just pulled the, the top expenses out of that. And then the bottom chart represents uh, the green. If you can see it close enough, is 2022 uh, revenues, and uh, the blue represents 2024. Or excuse me, 2023. So it's a 2022-2023 comparison. <clears throat> so we built an organizational chart um, to try to give a visual of what we're trying to do growth-wise. So this is a, a common structure for an organizational chart. However, you can see a lot of colors there. And what they represent, if you, if you look at the key portion, is where we want to be each year. And so each color represents where we'd like to be for this year, what positions are available, where we'll sit with full-time employees, part-time employees, volunteers, um, with the, the last goal of being in 2026, being able to fill those last positions. Um, and so we have a fully staffed sheriff's office by 2027. And so what I like about this is it gives that visible, visible representation for not just staff or the community, but any potential um, employment opportunities that people may see uh, as, a, as an option here at the sheriff's office. Uh, they can see where our planned growth is. You know, it gives them some hope in lateral movement for um, it's like specialty positions or vertical growth through promotions. We've had a lot of cool opportunities in 2023 to get engaged with the community. Um, the first ones we talk about here is just our engagement with our youth. Um, we had some um, different programs through Cloud City High School and, uh, and uh, Lake County High School, and the Colorado Mountain College's Pathways program, uh, where we gave students the opportunity to experience every aspect of the Sheriff's Office. 
What's cool about the sheriff's office is we do have a lot of different aspects from detentions to dispatch to patrol to administrative positions to evidence positions and we set up scenarios for the kids to go through to process a crime scene dispatch it they were on the radio and we gave them a tour of the facility um, and Shane is highlighted there as our evidence technician because 90% of the students wants his job. So he's <laughs> trying to protect his job at this point. <laughs> that was the hit. And it, it was just a, it's long-term planning um, to plant that seed in, in our youth's heart that, you know, this isn't a bad career option. And we have a lot of different um, avenues for you to pursue within the Lake County Sheriff's Office. We also joined the regular uh, Lions Club career fair that was a, uh, there was just everybody was there military and uh, so we had a, a good uh, interactive opportunity there too <clears throat> uh, we also engaged in the race series as you as you guys all know coming to our town um, every summer takes a lot of planning uh, we, we engaged in contracts with the colorado rangers to uh, help keep staff available for regular calls um, so we learned a lot this year we definitely improved from the prior years so we're just seeing that uh, better services that we're keeping available to the to the citizens not participating, but then also to the participants of the race series. Um, so we had some good progress there. <clears throat> um, the bottom left photo, if you guys recall that day, the first day in August, mm -hmm. was the uh, torrential downpours. Uh, we had planned the National Night Out, which is a, a nationwide law enforcement event where we can get engaged with the community, have fun events for the kids to do. Uh, we also had set up a fundraising opportunity for a Tree Chop uh, Child Advocacy, Advocacy Center and um, we were flooded out. <laughs> we had to spend days drying out the bounce houses, <laughs> but we recovered and got a spot. Um, thankfully, utilized the county's spot at the um, uh, boom days, and we were able to sell hot dogs there and still provide a donation to the tree chop, which is the advocacy center that we use for all child forensic interviews out of Summit County, so they were grateful for that. Um, uh, interim Chief Ken Chavez and I were able to participate in the um, uh, car show that happened at the elementary school. Uh, we're both able to select our own vehicle of choice to issue out the Sheriff's Award and the Chief's Award, so it was a cool opportunity to get engaged there. Uh, we also uh, participated in our first Faith in Blue event. And what that is, it's an opportunity for law enforcement to get engaged with all denominations and all churches within a community, just to let them know that we're there to support them in whatever needs they may have. Um, and then we also use it as an opportunity to collect food for St. George's. Um, and then December was a, a pretty cool month. We helped out with the Legacy Foundation in uh, their annual gift giving, which has been going on for over 40 years. And it's a great way for uniformed members to get in front of the children to help that relationship with our our youth in elementary school. Uh, we also received an anonymous donor um, gave us 10 or excuse me $110 gift cards and asked that we hand it out on just behalf of the sheriff's office just to help that community relationship. Um, and one cool story that popped out of that was we had an individual that We've had a lot of dealings with, and she's been kind of quiet for a while. Approached one of our deputies and told her that um, I've been sober for over a year now and just wanted to apologize for all the havoc she had caused us. <laughs> and so it was a cool opportunity to say, you know, here's a gift card for you. You know, it was just a few bucks, but it was a, it was a nice exchange. Um, and then we also reached out to the elementary school and asked for. Uh, if, if anybody, if any of the teachers or staff there knew of some families that needed some help during the holidays, this was kicked off by one of the moms there saying, I, I don't have a way to supply gifts for my kids this Christmas. Is there anybody willing to help? So we stepped up and we asked if there was any other families. So we went out and bought gifts, we gave out some of those gift cards and brought pizza to each one of these households in the community. Just all the deputies, we all spread out at once. And uh, it was, it was a, um, it was a special interaction with those families, the kids were excited, the parents teared up, of course, but it was another good engagement opportunity. All right, so in 2023, um, I promoted five supervisors. Um, prior to that, it was basically just me and uh, Under Sheriff Kramer. 
So we've uh, identified the areas that needed the supervision uh, directly for these employees. We were able to promote those through a multi-step process where they had to test and earn those positions, and we promoted those five. Um, our, our training improved from 2023. I wasn't getting a call from the state asking where our training records were at the end of the year. So we got that covered. Um, and then we uh, planned the future a lot better, which I'll mention here in a second. Um, gone through, updated our policies as of April 2023, and we'll do that again this year. And I mentioned our staffing levels already. <clears throat> so to go through some stats here, this is uh, for our E911 dispatch center, which is now under the E911 authority. Where I'm the chair of that board. Um, there was over 13,000 calls that came into the dispatch center, uh, which produced an average of 36.6 calls uh, each day. Um, another thing that the sheriff's office uh, is responsible for is our civil processes. And there's the numbers that we went through in 2023. And then our victim advocate unit uh, served 124 clients with 1,800 services provided to those victims. Uh, which is ranges from everything from assisting through court, the court process, uh, providing hotels for victims that need it, and just everything in between. All right, for our detention facility, they transported uh, 256 inmates uh, throughout the state. The bottom graph shows the transition from Teller County to Chaffee County, which is about half the travel time. Half the time dedicated towards transportation has been a, a huge help for just the morale, too, <laughs> not, not for all the other reasons. Um, then the graph above that shows the split of um, where those uh, arrests came from. Um, so the sheriff's office is uh, about 87% of those 256, they patrol 1%, and then the PD was 12%. <clears throat> Right, from the patrol division, um, the 800 and, uh, or excuse me, a little over 8,000 calls for service uh, was throughout the year, and that's just specifically for patrol to respond to. <clears throat> There's a different arrest. Now the rest numbers are higher because not everybody is transported out. There's the option to bond out, and that's why that number's a little, a little higher. Um, these are the, the 55 property crimes and 151 persons crimes. Those are stats that we pulled from the federal reporting that we have to do, and it's specific to their requirements. Um, about 1,800 traffic stops with uh, almost 800 cases taken. Um, we, as I mentioned before, we kind of range in a the variety of types of calls that we uh, respond to. Um, but there was one that stands out to me is the Rico Archuleta case where he barricaded himself in a house in the city limits uh, with a loaded weapon. And we were able to peacefully resolve that just because of the joint effort. We even pulled in Chinook County and their SWAT team, we worked with the Leadville Police Department and our staff, jail and everyone, and we were able to resolve that without any harm. Search and rescues conducted 32 missions this year. Are in 2023, and that's an all voluntary force. <laughs> that's good. Uh, so, a couple achievements uh, we issue out the uh, meritorious service, which you guys were a part of. So, it was just a way to express uh, my gratefulness for everybody during that period uh, for all the work when it was just unknown what was going to happen, but people stuck it out. So, I was grateful for that. Uh, the next two was. Uh, through you guys again, through the county, which we greatly appreciate the recognition, and uh, it's definitely a morale boost. So thanks for thanks for that. And Joe definitely earned it. And thank you for the the team award also. All right. Well, it's we deal with a variety of things, like I mentioned. Uh, some of it is it's kind of hard to deal with. We had three fatal crashes on our state highways this year. Uh, two from one crash and one from the other. Um, it's just it's just the, the situations that we have to deal with, and you know it reminds us of you know where we should put our focused efforts into to try to save lives. And we do work with the Colorado State Patrol and their information that they gather and the techniques that they use to try to prevent those, um, but they still happen. 
I did receive a nice thank you gift from Earl. Earl uh, owns Fat Bellies down in Texas. He comes up for the race series every year and really appreciates law enforcement. And he's quite the chef, so he cooked us some of his southern special gumbo and he had just for an appreciation <laughs> lunch. It was great. We had everybody out there for that. He served us the whole nine yards, so that was, that was a good experience. All right, so our future um, will be approaching some rebranding. And, uh, and our goal is to just to kind of give a new face to the sheriff's office. This is probably going to take multiple years to, before we get to that point where we're able to um, rebrand us from the vehicle standpoint. Um, really excited, as you guys all know, that we have an under sheriff that started January 8th, and uh, he's at a sheriff's conference right now. So he's learning quickly, but we also have the space for him to learn correctly. And he has the background and the mentality of exactly what we were looking for. And it just makes me grateful that we were all able to, to wait that nearly two years to find the right person for the job and that everybody shared that additional workload um, to get us to the point where we had the right under sheriff in place. So it's just really going to propel our growth and uh, take some of the strain off of everybody. So to our training calendar in 2024, as I mentioned, we slowly increased our, our, uh, our training through from 2022 to 2023. And this year we've built out an entire year pre-planned uh, training. Every Wednesday is a training day for somebody. And it's been pre-scheduled out to not only make sure that we're meeting the minimum requirements, but that we're also uh, going above and beyond that, applying it to scenario based, um, just to add that stress element. So we have a good reaction from our, from our deputies and it all comes from training. This is the next page. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. So this is the dispatch change that I brought up earlier uh, that it's now in transition to underneath the authority of, uh, or underneath the you know, one authority. Um, this year we've scheduled out to be a transition year. There's a lot to work through. We've had to work with our treasurer's office and finance just to see how this all needs to be laid out. And uh, so I think we have plenty of time to make sure that's all handled correctly and that everybody is aware of how that's going to, that transition will go. Uh, we have appointed Chelsea Parsons, who's been here for quite a while now. She's worked her way up through the ranks and has demonstrated uh, the ability and desire to be in that position. So we've appointed her as the interim executive director for the Lake County Communications and we'll eventually post that position and, and see what type of candidates we receive. So also going into uh, year two, uh, we're gonna learn, learn from 23, what worked, what didn't work. Uh, we, we're making those training improvements and um, also focusing on being uh, proactive now in our recruitment efforts since we have positions that we wanna fill. And whereas before it was just a, simply a post of what's available. So now we're gonna take it a step up and be a little more proactive. And I really wanna focus on the wellness of our staff. Um, and, and the retention that that comes with. Going back to those earlier numbers where we had over 8,000 uh, calls for service, that averaged to be about 920 something calls per deputy. And just to give that some comparison, why we want to improve our recruitment efforts, um, just looking at uh, a couple of the other counties that noticed their call volume per deputy is around six to 700 per deputy. And there's some stats out there through the FBI and the Uniform uh, Criminal um, Reporting System that they see uh, about 2.4 officers per thousand. So it just, go, it just goes to show that we are making the right steps to make sure that we're fully staffed and that we're not overstaffed but what's the right levels for our focus is. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You guys have any questions for me? Commissioners, questions? Comments? No, thank you so much. All right. I, I wanted to add, I really appreciate the mention of sort of the de escalation, the community policing training, in addition to you know the necessary, you know, I really Correct. appreciate that yeah. focus and mention to the director. Yeah, it's been great to, uh, they have training specific for that where they're, the deputies are put under pressure to act and to do something. And then they're judged, so that's it's a it's a stressful type of training to go through. Uh, but it really helps when they have to uh, really encounter a situation where they have to focus on that de-escalation efforts. And uh, there's been quite a few stories where uh, I'm pretty proud of the deputy's response, where it could have gone 
um, even lethal, and they've been able to de-escalate the situation. Yeah. Um, that and your prevention focus to yeah, right. get yeah. in there eventually. And I think a lot of that comes from taking care of your people in the first place, yeah. as you also of course, are emphasizing. So yeah. thank you. Well, and we'll make that public. We'll get that report out so that everybody can have access to it. Excellent. Okay. All right. Thank Thanks, you so guys. much. For Thanks, Steve. Yeah. See ya. Thanks. Do we want to actually, for an acknowledgement, do we actually make a motion on that? Or do we just, did I just, sorry, I should know this at this point, but should we make a motion or is it okay that it's just going to be agenda? Yeah, yeah. Okay. there's no Great. formal action that you need to take. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Steve. Would it be possible to move agenda item eight to the next one so that Michael can leave? We'll go home. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Um, yeah. No objection here. Yeah. yeah, I'm good with that too. So yeah. If you can Let's, pull up Frost Solutions website. Yeah. Website? Yeah. What is the website? Frost Solutions. <laughs> Up there. I mean weather station. This? Yep. So this is. I'm just going to share it, Michael. Okay. 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 So this is what we're kind of looking at. Um, there, they will provide a lot of information to not only Road and Bridge but the county as a whole. Um, a lot of departments can use this. Um, I don't know if you did. You, it's did you see the municipality one mm -mm. back at the top? Oh, right here. Yeah, for me, one of the two items. This one right here? Yep. Okay. So, safer roads, happier residents, <laughs> easy on the budget. Um, you can just scroll up because it, it keeps scrolling down. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so, Frost Solutions give a lot of data that we can't get ourselves. Um, obviously, beside the camera on scene, um, we get air, road temperatures, viewpoints. Um, and we can collect that data over time, so we can look and see, you know, what maybe we can expect this time of year, or um, all of that. Hopefully, I can put people where I need to, and not like have to call everybody in because we got snow. <laughs> like one night over the weekend, it was like Leadville got it from like then again, um, so I was able to get everybody to Leadville to help out. We can scroll down some more. Okay, tell me where to stop. Um, that's good. Okay. Um, all year round benefits, we can watch floods, flood areas. We can relocate these cameras pretty easily. Uh, okay. um, so where we need them, we can re relocate them. Um, we can watch the fields, um, parks. Um, Water ditches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> flooding plant, flooding plant prone areas. Um, yeah, and you know, we can take pictures of all that and we can record it. Um, the biggest thing about these is it's not only us that can see them. Anybody can go to a website and see them. So for recreation, for people coming out of town who want to know what the weather's going to be like in a certain area of Lake County, um, they can see what's going on. They can see what the weather history has been over a couple of weeks or whatever. Um, it's just a lot of information that we don't have and being as where we're located um, a lot of the weather stations or what whatever can't predict what's going to happen in lake county with having these separate all through the county we're looking at five of these cameras starting at the north end and going south um, we'll be able to get an idea of what's going on in the county pretty quickly um, as weather's changing and what it's doing instantly also. It's just, it's good. I mean, yeah, I know they're pricey, but we don't have to maintain them at all. So if they break, they will be replaced for that same cost. And every upgrade that they have to do to them, um, either software or hardware, they will take care of that throughout the year if we need it. Okay. Um, I think it, it's it's good, you know, even if we just try it for a while and see how it works for a year. Um, I think it's going to be, you know, a positive thing for Lake County. And 
that's about all I have to say about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because there's a there's a thing. So we can mount them ourselves. We don't need anybody to mount them for us. Um, they're all cell phone operated. So and they're, they're it's all included in the price. Okay. Cool. I didn't dig into this in the packet. Sorry, is there a data storage issue? Like, do we store the data? Do they store the data? Um, or like, or they how? store it. Okay. And, and but it's our da data, so Great. we okay. can get get to it anytime. Okay. Yeah. And not only that, um, they can work out other counties or cities that might have it upwind from us. <laughs> they uh, can start providing us data as it's moving towards us. Yeah. Okay. Um, wow. And then they can work that out with them to share their data with us. Like like weather rights. Now. Yeah. So like if that's was getting dumped on, mm -hmm. <laughs> we might get that same storm or sure. you know if it's coming from I seventy Bay Illegal that okay. way, this way. Okay. Cool. We we can share that data. All right. Do others have this or yeah. others using others, this? Yeah. They do Colorado us? Colorado has a bunch of these in, in the state. Okay. Sure. Is five cameras enough for what you? For I think for what we're trying to do, yeah, because we can get you know up by Ski Cooper, okay. um, County Road 19, someplace in there, um, to get the you know what's happening on the north end of the county. We can move further down towards um, County Road 9 and Turquoise Lake. Um, I want to put one in at least one in town someplace, okay. so I know what's going on here in town. I thought about the courthouse here, but. We were talking the other day, and maybe the ice ice palace bar, the ice palace, the ice skating rink, because okay. we're having a lot of fun down there right now. Sure. <laughs> Just like at the library. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you know, just the next step further south, we know that around County Road 11, Half Moon, we have a lot of weather problems. That you know, maybe we can get ahead of that before it happens. Sure. Um, and then from Lakes area, someplace. Okay. And what's the, the cost per camera? It's three thousand dollars a camera. Okay. Um, per year. Yeah, and that takes, like I said, care of everything. Okay. And just from you, know, I was going to say I reviewed the proposal, provided a couple comments back, which they accepted in changing the proposal and prepared one of the counties a purchase order for this, since this is mostly equipment with some ancillary services. Um, and so I, I'm waiting to, they sent it back um, today with the updates, but there was a typo, so I've sent it back to, I haven't heard from them, so at this point I would recommend if you're inclined to approve it, to approve it pending final legal review for that. So we get those documents in place. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah, go. Do we yeah. need to, do we need to add this aside? Are we adding security cameras in other places? Um, yeah, we and are looking like at trail counters trail and stuff like that. Stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Yes, okay. we are. Okay. We're adding to that. Because <laughs> okay. there, yeah, there's other, yeah, there's other. Well, it's like at the library, it's got cameras all over, but I don't know what we really saw. <laughs> well, they have say, yeah. that's a something. So. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I would be in favor of adding to kind of our inventory for other, other needs. Yeah, and these cameras monitoring. can zoom in on things too, so okay. we can see, even if we're at a wide angle, we can zoom in on something. Okay. Yeah. Chris, does the, the purchase order specify the amount of cameras? Mm -hmm. Yes, it, okay. it, yeah, it has the Kip. five at $3,000 uh, per unit for a total cost of 15000 And as Michael um, mentioned, it's a one-year purchase order, so in case we're not obligated beyond this one year for that. Okay. Kent, um, I guess my only point of discussion is that I'm I'm uh, worried that you you won't have enough of them, <laughs> and that you might want we more. We always so. have more next year. <laughs> I, I would or, just or mid year, I would, right? I mean, I, yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, just I just in it. order to like not come back to us with additions yeah. to the service, I would like to I, be able I don't to give know you that we can add. To, in the middle of the year because it is it's we it's pay, buy the equipment okay and so you don't change and if you terminate 
you don't get anything back. So if it doesn't end up working the way we hope it will, you're, so you're obligated for the year with 15. So if you want more, my suggestion might be to go in and ask them to add Yeah, we could add them now. right now still. We'll I, I, feel, I wonder, I mean, I think we should have security cameras, but I'm worried about using these as security. I mean, these yeah. do a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. Right. So maybe we just add to security cameras. Yeah, some yeah. other security cameras in the system we have currently. Um, I mean, especially with vandalism, these are, if we get a number of these ruined. Yeah. I mean, I, I, appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate the locations you might set them at where we could have dual purpose, yeah. but for your deployment and efficiencies and kind right. of heads up on weather. I did forget to weather mention, and, these will notify us if the temperature drops to a certain point mm. in a certain area so that you know, we can start watching that area. Mm -hmm. yeah. One yeah. thing I, I noticed on the website, it, it, it looked as if they're installed at pavement level to be able to... to oh, no, they, they're, up, they're up high so people can't touch them. But they, they, okay, because that's going to be my thing. Infrared. Infrared. Over infrared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they do take temperatures of the okay. highway, but okay. they infrared temperatures. So. Okay. Yeah. And for your purposes, you think that five is plenty? I think for right now, just along you know the main corridor through the okay. county, um, CDOT takes care of 91, and there's not any county roads except for 91 off of Highway 90, 91B off of 91. Sure. Spit that out. Yeah. <laughs> so it seems weird to me that a commercial company wouldn't be willing to take our money if we wanted to. It just uh, seems, yeah, well, it's strange. They <laughs> offered us, you know, the number was up to us. Yeah. Um, and, sorry. I, I'm going to start with five because I could case. also see them like for OHV enforcement. But let's, I mean, let's We're not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Again. I guess that was just my question. Yeah. I, think. I mean, if you have them in those locations where they have a concentration of activity on the in the summertime on the east side of town or at Turquoise Lake, okay. like what's your flexibility or would you prefer more? Well, and again, just, is that more for security cameras for enforcement issues or? conditions of the roads and the trails and stuff. Yeah, there's definitely a different yeah. level of um, like game camera yeah. kind of trail count mm -hmm. things you can get, you know, for with different sophistication. Um, I do I do I appreciate your thought on, on deploying folks and, you know, actually knowing between what the differences and what might happen between the county. I also am curious to see how that happens. You know what are our winter locations versus summer locations potentially and the tourism visitation is an interesting one because you're right you get a lot of people who think that things are just fine or or maybe they are better and you should stop yeah. here and not go to i-70 i don't know <laughs> um, but yeah i think i'd be i'm eager to see what kind of information you glean from it yeah. Me too. Yeah. I mean, they ran me through a whole, whole bigger deal than I just did in you, but um, they showed me people as the snow starts coming and how they were watching, you know, their cameras to, to get the information. And, yeah. And pretty good. Yeah. And I'm wondering, even if we got to spend a little money, yeah. if it saves us in the long run with diesel fuel and yeah. all of yeah. that, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, is in staffing and overtime, especially. For, yeah, because there will be a lot of it this weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve pending legal review the contract with Frost Solutions for five weather cameras. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion or questions? None, none for me. None for me either. Thanks. Great. And I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 Uh, is approved. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Thank you, Mike. Nice rest of your meeting. Yes. <laughs> Enjoy your day. I will. Outside of here. <laughs> and we're back to item number two the lease agreement with Midwest Connect for a postage machine. Yes, and Connor might be chiming on this if she knows, but it's my understanding that the machine that the first office currently has is antiquated and is no longer supported. So. This was to uh, this is to allow them to lease a, a new machine um, after way too many times going back and forth with um, Midwest Connect about the contract documents. They finally sent me something that actually made sense, and, and so 
um, I, I recommend that it be approved at least to bring the, the updated equipment in. Okay. okay. I don't have any questions. Anyone? And just, I was going to say, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention to you, and this is based on state contract too. So okay. we're participating under the state's contracts to be able to get the same level of fees and services and that kind of stuff. That's great. Um, I'll move to approve the Midwest Connect contract to lease a postage machine for the clerk and recorder's office. I'll second. Okay. Uh, any last minute questions? No, no thank okay. you. Uh, call for a vote. Aye. 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 Uh, the agreement with Windows Connect is approved. Thank you. Uh, item number three, discussion and approval of amendments to the Lake County Government Employee Handbook. Zoe, you are up. And like, I mean, these are, these are the ones that we discussed in the work session, right? Yes. Yeah, great. Did you want me to pull those up, Tim, Zoe, Chris? That is O2 if you want to. Yep. So that gets in the packet and we can, whatever you got. Do you want me to pull yes. those yeah. up Screen share those. Okay. Um, My recollection from the work session is they were fairly straightforward and we didn't have any major questions on them. Right. So this first amendment would be for remote work, um, just stating that it is within the state of Colorado and with the approval of our county manager. Okay. Um, this one is to simplify the personal leave for three quarter time employees. Um, so you can see here. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, and then this one is just adding reasons for sick leave, and this is following the Colorado's Healthy Families and Workplace Act. Okay. And this adds loss of pregnancy to our bereavement leave. Okay. Um, with Colorado's law regarding workers' compensation, going from four to ten working days to let us know of an injury. Um, and then this came up during the EMPG audit, and it's basically just outlining responsibilities for um, emergency management and having employees sign off on those responsibilities. And this is the okay. And this is the removal of the comps order because the county does not need to adhere to Colorado overtime and minimum pay standards. Okay. Sure. Any questions or discussion? Um, I don't think so. Uh, just wanted to uh, remind us to make sure that we have CLT trained staff on changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll call for a motion to approve the presented amendments to the Lake County Government Employee Handbook. So moved. No second. Okay, uh, we're good. Call for a vote. Aye. 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 The amendments are approved. Um, anything else you need from us in implementing that besides the comment from Kayla? No, I'll okay. go ahead and make those edits and send them out and then train our managers for sure. Cool. cool. Thank, you. Thank, okay. you, Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Joey. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. Thank you, too. Okay. Agenda item number for discussion and consideration of Colorado Works Memorandum of Understanding and the Annual Reaffirmation of the Colorado Works Program MOU. Janine, you are up. Janine, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. now I can. Okay. Sorry, just getting it set. Um, yeah, so. Uh, standard standard MOU um, with Colorado Works with the state saying that we agree to operate the Colorado Works program in Lake County. Okay. Any questions? 
<laughs> no, I'll move, no uh, not at this time. Uh, I'll move to approve the Colorado Works Memorandum of Understanding, um, an annual reaffirmation of the Colorado Works Program at MOU. I'll second. Okay. Uh, call for a vote. And is there any other questions? I don't have any other discussion. No. Okay. Thank you. All right. Aye. 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 The MOU and the annual reaffirmation are approved. Okay. Thank you. Uh, number five, discussion and consideration of the Colorado Child Care Assistance Program, MOU, with the state of Colorado. So very similar, uh, just running the Child Care Assistance Program for the state in Lake County. Okay. I will make a motion that we approve the Colorado Child Care Assistance Program, MOU, with the state of Colorado, also known as CCAP. I'll second. Great. Um, call for a vote. Aye. 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 Uh, the Child Care Assistance Program, MOU, is approved. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, just make sure I'm in the right place. Number six, discussion and consideration of the early childhood MOU with the state of Colorado. Same as the last two. Um, these are our requirements <laughs> with the state. Okay. Any questions or discussion? No, none for me. Thank okay. you. I'll call for a motion to uh, approve. Yeah. I it. can make a motion that we approve the early childhood MOU with the state of Colorado. I'll second. Okay. Um, there's no discussion, so I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 Uh, the early childhood MOU is approved. Uh, so on to agenda item number seven. Uh, discussion and consideration of the Colorado Balance of State Continuum of Care Coordinated Entry System, MOU. Yep, same as the others. This is, um, well, similar, I should say. This is a new um, process that we're looking at coordinating entry for uh, homeless services. And um, we're doing that through our wraparound program up to age 24. Okay. Is that so? The wraparound, the adult wraparound, is not included here. Um, not at this point. Um, that's a good conversation for um, including them. They will not be the point for the coordinated entry. Um, the advocates of Lake County have have pinpointed that they are the uh, coordination of entry point for adults over age twenty four. Um, but it doesn't mean we aren't working with them and working with that same population. It just means that we coordinate the entry so that we're tracking it all together. Okay. Um, and Janine, I think this is the one where this MOU, I think it was recommended that the BOCC be the, because there might be multiple agencies yep. of yep. involved. So the BOCC would be the, the signatory versus DHS, if you will. Um, and I think I sent a note yesterday that I was still waiting. I was going to see if it was in teams. Yeah. There's to check boxes as to what roles and responsibilities the county is going to assume that still needs to be completed before it's yes, off. Yes, you are so, correct. And yeah. I, um, I just rep we replied to your email this morning, and then I remembered this was on the agenda. But um, what I can do is have Gloria look at that. I believe the library yeah. and some other folks at the county were also asked to participate in this MOU. So. We just need to clarify who's doing what in those right. roles. Correct. So this would be the blanket BOCC approval that Lake County government is participating in this, but each individual department that does have a role in homelessness will have their own checkbox for okay. them, right? Like library has certain patron privacy things they need to maintain, same with DHS or how, how folks can get the resources they need. Um, okay, so we're okay to approve this MOU. Yes, and then the waiting. department directors will fill out the yes, checkbox. So. Okay. The various, yeah. All right. Um, I'll move to approve the Colorado Balance of State Continuum of Care um, Coordinated Entry System MOU. So I'll second. Okay, great. Any additional questions or discussion? Um, maybe just what, Janine, how did the re drawing of does this have to do with the boundary nope. and the 
Okay. Okay. Nope. <laughs> That's the ray. <laughs> the ray, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, nothing else for me. Thank you. Okay. Then I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 Uh, so the balance of state continuum of care uh, county MOU is approved. Thank you. And we did number eight. Um, just quickly before we start number nine, do, is Anne on deck? Does she know that we're moving yes. pretty quickly? Great, thank you. Um, then uh, agenda item number nine, discussion and consideration of resolution 2024-6, the mill levy resolution for the fiscal year of 2024. We have Tim listed, but... Yes, <laughs> <laughs> So as you may recall, every year you guys certify the mills for other um, taxing entities. What is this number nine? Yep. Um, and uh, there are varying uh, taxing districts within Lake County. Um, so not that you have to certify your own, but then you certify everybody else's that they've also done their job in setting a mill or not setting it. Uh, we did just receive Sylvan Lakes, um, so uh, we have them all. That is correct. We have them all. Um, okay. And the resolution has been updated. Um, I don't uh, fairly normal uh, business, but I don't know if Stephanie or Commissioner Marcella or anybody else some more detail they want to fill in. Um, I did, I'm sorry, just this morning add in that big spreadsheet that shows like the TIF breakdown and um, sort of what we send to the state. So that's in your packet too. I'm sorry that was just there this morning, but it's pretty routine that you yeah. see every year. So just wanted to let you know that's in there too. If you have any questions about anything? Okay. No. Uh, nothing more for me. Stuff hit it pretty good. Okay, uh, then I'll call for a motion for uh, to approve uh, resolution 2024-6, the mill levy resolution for fiscal year of 2024. Um, so moved. I'll second. Great. Do we want to read this in town right there? It's up you to you. Just read the, you can read the title. Okay. And you guys, but you can just read the title. Yes. Just the title sounds great to me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is resolution 2024 or 24 6 um, of Lake County, uh, mill levy resolution for the fiscal year 2024. Okay. Nothing for me. Nothing for me. Either. Call for a vote. Aye. 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 Great. Resolution 24-6, the mill levy resolution for fiscal year 2024 is approved. Great. Thank you, everyone, on all that work. Uh, and then our final full agenda item number 10, um, the amendment to ordinance 23-01, an ordinance addressing multi-purpose use on county roads. And we have an NCPD staff here. Hello, thank you. Do you want me to pull up 23-01 or 24-01? Um, go ahead and do 24-01. Okay. <coughs> um, so based on our work session on uh, the 11th, um, staff and um, consulted with legal and um, together we um, have amended the ordinance um, and we prepared, we um, included or I sent over just kind of an itemized list of all of the changes that we made um, specific to um, the ask of the board. I'm happy to go through all of those if you'd like or um, just reference them if you've had time to look through them. Today what we're hoping to do is to introduce um, the ordinance and uh, look for guidance on publishing it um, and setting the public hearing. So happy to, to do whatever the board desires as far as review. Um, I mean, quickly go yeah. through of just the change, sure. the, the change pieces. I think. Yeah, I think we made a fair. Do you want easy. me to tell me where to scroll, Anne, and I can make sure, sure that that's. We're going to start in definite. Um, 
Well, let's actually, let's start at the whereas is I put those at the very bottom, but if you, um, I'm, and I don't know if you need to, maybe you can follow along. Let's see, the first one is uh, whereas ordinance 2301. And um, so it would be down a little bit. Um, yeah, right, right there. there. Um, so we just added and recognized ordinance 2301 and that it was adapted as a stopgap measure to address certain emergent issues while Lake County conducted further investigation and research regarding the impact of OHV use of county roadways. So we just recognize that because we're going to rescind it. So we wanted to make sure that we um, uh, made note of it. And then um, there's a whereas almost, I think it's not quite the last whereas, um, but it's the one just prior, I believe. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and so this was uh, directed to uh, by the board to staff. And so this uh, addresses um, kind of limiting where we're at right now. So whereas the Board of County Commissioners find it is in the best interest of the community to limit the degree of commercial recreational permits until such time as Lake County can determine the sustainability of increased OHV and snowmobile commercial use. Um, and so this last statement, um, as I made note, just it recognizes it's in the best interest of the community to limit the degree of commercial use currently, and then just acknowledges that future work that we've been talking about with pros and the sticker program. And um, I would also say um, that we specifically wanted to make it um, exclusive to OHV and snowmobile um commercial use and so that's specific um or intentionally specific okay um then under definitions so that very first one um we added the the following sentence at the end um which just says which are prohibited for general recreational use as far as snow cats or groomers okay and um but the other there was an ask to add motorized and after review um we are going to air and, and certainly i um, checked with Chris. This is a statute definition, and so um, there tends to be unintended consequences when we go in and modify statutorily defined um, use. And so we're just um, cautioning on the side of, or or erring on the side of caution, um, and keeping that the same. Yeah, um, that commission would you ask to add um, motorized in front of self-propelled vehicle? And a recommendation is not to do that, just so we stay consistent with that. And then looking at the use of the statutory definition across other communities, too, they don't have it. And I think that allows you more flexibility and inclusion in terms of the type of units that are involved, that evolving forward, and not have to argue whether an electric, you know, OHV unit is the same as motorized or that type of thing. Okay. I, yeah, I and this is specific to OHV, and I think when we put more signage out it'll be yeah. i mean it won't i just i know something that was cautioned to us in like putting signage up of limiting vehicle access yes. is like don't just say wheeled vehicles say yeah. motorized, motorized and or, and, yeah like vehicles yeah. because then you're limiting bikes or carriages or right. whatever the other you know non or or other human powered vehicles maybe yeah. anyway no, okay. I, as long as we don't think that that's going to be misconstrued i guess um section one can, can, um, can oh, i sorry. just um so it was brought up to us after the meeting too that the groomers piece uh -huh. and like um, general yes. yeah that ohv um that there are some did, did i i had thought to reach out to michael but there are some like of the tiny old cat groomers that people bring out on trails. And I think our concern is like the cats that are big and modern and meant to groom and maintain the facilities versus the smaller guys that so, people might bring out. So on, on those with the smaller ones, just from conversations, tangential conversations with Michael and also watching from my window. It's like a convoy of eight of those mm -hmm. um, that they trailer in from either Summit or Neagle County um, and go out and use the trails and stuff. Um, I, don't, I don't know that they have, and from Adam Ducharme, I don't know that they have private property that they're using or not, but... <clears throat> so maybe it's error not just on the side of keeping this? Yeah. 
<clears throat> would be my suggestion figure out how we everything else okay yeah yeah i think i think it addresses the 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 intent of your concern and that they kind of maybe have this one-off situation but yeah I, I think i would kind of keep the ordinance consistent and then okay you can kind of address that if you have these kind of one-off situations through the okay. permit yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah okay are you good with this sir yep okay thank you um okay <clears throat> section one designation of roads um to commissioner uh, marcella's request we we just emphasized uh we added um you know that that harrison avenue is a state highway so it reads lake county roads except those that are part of the st state highway system to include without limitation harrison avenue and the city of leadville are designated as multi-purpose roads but we really wanted to make sure that we were pulling out that harrison avenue is um uh part of the state highway system I know that was important to make sure that that was included. Um, so Chris, I think Chris actually did that in, in a couple different places. Cool. Um, section three, commercial OHV use standards. Um, and so this is to, um, you know, we put the whereas and the reason behind the limitation on the use. And so under standards, um, we added all OHV or snowmobile outfitter and guide applicants um, must have operated in Lake County within the past 12 calendar months preceding the application date. Um, so that is oh, a standard right now. Yeah. Right there. Sorry, number two. Yes, number two. Okay. And then we, um, at the very, towards the, um, well, let's see, right in about the middle, we upped the liability insurance to a million instead of 100,000. I think it's down a little bit. Oh, yeah, down. Yeah. Oh, right okay. there. Yeah. So the number bottom. nine, that limit has been increased to a million. And then um, number 13, um, so we talked about assignability, um, you know, and how would that work and what we've seen historically. So we just put the permits um, are not assignable without the advanced written consent of the Board of County Commissioners, which gives you the ability to review it. Okay. Um, under the permit approval criteria, um, next number two, um, we just added um, that um, discussion uh, Commissioner Fiedler had on making sure that um, it's not an intense use of the county roadways relative to the condition of the roadway and or existing volume of use so we changed degree to volume of use and added in the condition um, and then i know that you had cited the um statute that um uh michael found while we were having the discussion um and you know also gives the authority for road closure so um that's been added um at the beginning of the ordinance and there may be a few other edits chris but i think those are i kind of get the high uh, i think any other we're just uh, uh, you know for clarity or what not to actually change the substance so, yeah uh, okay. okay so those those are everything that we have for you today um and then I just wanted to confirm that the public hearing is set for February 6th um, at 11 o'clock. I tried to look, um, that's the only time that I saw it set on your calendars for anything. Um, and so I, I'm assuming, so that's the time that I used was February 6th at 11 for the public hearing. It's a regular meeting, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so then, um, just need it read in and it can do it by title with a motion to publish if everything looks okay well and here's the, the the catch with that is that when you read it it was, wasn't at a regular or special meeting it was a work session right so, so I, think the could, I think the code requires it to be read in and so it's considered a first reading i'm sorry okay since it wasn't at a regular special meeting Darn sorry, it, I was whoever gets to read that i was trying to skip over that <laughs> i will I, i'll pass off if i need a do you want me to go ahead and read it in and make motion yeah but can i ask a so what actually are we voting on today is is it this to to be able to, to set a approve hearing. this for publication so set so the approving, public hearing date so we're approving 2401 for publication yes. correct okay and setting the public hearing oh yeah not just so 20. okay and 
And and and just on that, just and I, I don't maybe it doesn't affect what we vote on today, but like we are we it says amend twenty three oh one and then at some point where you're speaking we said we're res, at some I mean, we're we will rescind, rescind twenty three oh one. So okay, so yeah. it's clear in what you're about to read into the record. Yes. Fantastic. And at the public hearing, um you can make changes without having to hold another public hearing. So yes. great. Um, but we are we are doing at this point the knowledge that we have. <laughs> So, okay. Okay, then take it away. All right, here we go. An ordinance addressing multi-purpose use on county roads. Whereas Colorado Revised Statute sections 33, 14, 110, 33, 14, 118, 33, 145, 107, 33, 14.5, 107, 33.14.5, 108, and 33.14.5, 110 authorize the Lake County Board of County Commissioners to adopt this ordinance regulating the means of conveyance for off-highway vehicles, OHVs, and snowmobiles in a manner not inconsistent with other federal, state, and local laws, rules, and regulations, and Whereas the Colorado Revised Statute 3011-1012 authorizes the Board of County Commissioners to adopt this ordinance regarding health, safety, and welfare issues as otherwise prescribed by law. And whereas Colorado Revised Statute 3011-1012 authorizes the Board of County Commissioners to designate roads for multipurpose use and impose a fine and penalty for violations as a class two petty offense, as well as assess a fine under the penalty assessment procedure in Section 163201 of Colorado Revised Statute and Section 4141063BC and D Colorado Revised Statute, and also authorizes the Board of County Commissioners to designate highways under their jurisdiction for over snow use only. And whereas Resolution 1013 was an enacted to designate all county roads as multi-purpose roadways providing recreational access to OHV snowmobiles and similar similar use motorized recreational use along with foot traffic bicycle horseback and similar use non-motorized recreational use and whereas ordinance 1202 was adopted to establish enforcement through fines and penalties as a class 2 petty offense and whereas Ordinance 2301 was adopted as a staff gap measure to address certain emergent issues while Lake County conducted further investigation and research regarding the impact of OHV use of county roadways and whereas the Board of County Commissioners is desirous to ensure recreational access is balanced in a manner between all user groups including general or public commercial motorized and non motorized as to not threaten safe access for all promote the preservation of the quality of the experience and to properly mitigate adverse impact and whereas lake county has created a lake county ohb roadway use map which will be updated from time to time to provide the public access information increase county awareness and provide for informed decision making and whereas lake county traffic volumes and recreational use has increased since ordinance 1202 resulting in the need for a more managed approach to ensure the health safety and welfare of the com community and whereas ordinance 1202 did not contemplate or provide guidance on the management of commercial recreational user groups and whereas a coordinated planning effort has been facilitated by community planning and development in collaboration with lake county mapping public works parks recreation and open space and the sheriff's office to develop a commercial permitting process policy oversight and enforcement in accordance with this ordinance and whereas community planning and development hosted public engagement through town hall meetings, stakeholder interviews, web-based public comment portals, and surveys, and whereas the inclusive data collected by community planning and development has been considered in making these determinations, and whereas the Board of County Commissioner finds it is in the best interest of the community to limit the degree of commercial recreational permits until such time as Lake County can determine the sustainability of increased OHV and snowmobile commercial use, and whereas the Board of County Commissioners wants to create a balanced commercial and general or public recreational use of county roads to preserve and maintain roadways and the safety, welfare, and health of the community. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Board of County Commissioners of Lake County, Colorado. Definitions. Off-highway vehicle OHV. It is recognized that types of motorized recreational vehicles are evolving, and as such, recreational use may not be limited to current OHV or snowmobile models. Therefore, 
An AOHV is defined as a self-propelled vehicle which is designated to travel on wheels or tracks in contact with the ground, which is designated primarily for use off public highways, and which is generally and commonly used to transport persons for recreational purposes. OHV for purposes of this ordinance does not include snow cats or groomers, which are prohibited for general recreational use. Snowmobile. Snowmobile is defined as a self-propelled vehicle primarily designed or altered for travel on snow or ice when supported in part by skis, belts, or cleats, which is designated primarily for use off public highways and which is generally and commonly used to transport persons for recreational purposes. For purposes of this ordinance, all standards associated with OHV shall also apply to snowmobiles. General or public use. User. A self-guided individual using utilize, user utilizing county roadways for motorized or non-motorized recreational use where no consideration is paid to a third party guide to access the experience. Commercial user, an individual or company offering OHV guiding or motorized OHV recreational rental services, which may include outfitting to the public and utilizing county roadways in exchange for some type of consideration, generally with a monetary value. Multipurpose access, access granted to general users properly permitted commercial users, both motorized and non-motorized, for the purpose of recreation on county roadways, notwithstanding except exceptions based on any standards outlined in this ordinance. Section 1, designation of roads. Lake County roads, except those that are part of the state highway system to include without limitation Harrison Avenue in the city of Leadville, are designated as multi-purpose roads for the appropriate use of all means of conveyance, including but not limited to foot travel, horseback, bicycle, motorcycle, all-terrain vehicles, snowmobile, car, or automobile, truck, and other motor vehicles. Section 2, General OHV Use. All operations of conveyance on county roads shall be conducted in a safe manner and in compliance with all applicable federal, state, and local laws, rules, regulations, and orders. Prohibited areas for OHV use include protected wildlife areas, alpine tundra, private property, and areas designated for pedestrians or non-motorized use only. OHV use is also subject to the following, which all which will be enforced pursuant to applicable provisions of Lake County's adopted model traffic code. Number one, all OHVs shall be operated only by licensed operators, 16 years of age and older, unless accompanied by a licensed operator. Juveniles 18 years of age and younger must wear a helmet and all operators must wear eye protection. Number two, all OHV operators must maintain appropriate liability insurance, registration, lighting, and operate only on designated roadways. Number three, all use of county roads by motorized OHVs must be limited to direct travel from point A, a starting point, to point B, recreation destination within Lake County. The allowed purpose of travel shall be for access to recreation destinations only and is not intended to access and is not intended to include access for shopping at retail stores, the post office, or OHV restricted areas. Number four, use of county roads by OHVs will be allowed only during daylight hours unless such vehicles are equipped with a headlight and taillight compliant with applicable state standards. Number five, OHV users are expected to be considerate of the natural environment in Lake County, particularly Alpine Tundra, which is fragile and valued, and shall comply with all posted notices for preservation of such areas. Exceptional care and management of these areas is provided by county stakeholders and land managers, such as the Bureau of Land Management and the U.S. Forest Service. Violation of any applicable laws or regulations pertaining to such areas may be subject to penalties and or legal action. Number six, users shall comply with all notices and directives posted by the Lake County Public Works as designated by the County Road Supervisor and or Public Works Director in determining safe conditions for OHV access and use. Number seven, users shall conduct no plowing, growing, grading, moving of snow berms or use of any blade or earth moving attachment without the written consent of the county. And users must carry said consent with them when performing such approved activities. Number eight, no snowmobile or OHV shall be allowed to make unreasonable noise during its operation in violation of applicable code provisions. Section three, commercial OHV use standards. Use of Lake County roads designated as multi-purpose roads for the legally permitted use of commercial conveyance include, but not limited to, foot travel, horseback, bicycle, motorcycle, 
all-terrain vehicle, OHV, snowmobile, car, or automobile, truck, and other motor vehicles shall be subject to all the following. Number one, ensure guides and users adhere to the same rules and regulations for OHV use listed in Section 2, as well as applicable stand provisions of Lake County's adopted model traffic code. Number two, all OHV or snowmobile outfitter and guide applicants must have operated in Lake County within the past 12 calendar months preceding the application date. Number three, all commercial recreational use incidental to county roadways shall hold a current and valid commercial recreation permit. Number four, commercial applicants must maintain a permitted physical base of operation in either A, unincorporated Lake County through a recorded conditional use permit held in good standing, or B, the city of Leadville registered with proof of a current business license held in good standing. Number five, commercial motorized use shall not be permitted on main collector roads, which serve the community as main roadways and evacuation routes, including but not limited to Harrison Avenue and County Roads 4 and 17. Number six, approved commercial recreation permits shall include at a minimum, A, the company name and emergency contact, B, all permitted routes, C, type of vehicle, D, group size per tour, E, days of operation, frequency per day and season, winter or summer. Number seven, commercial recreation permits for using Lake County roadways must sign a cost and fees agreement. Number eight, commercial permit holders shall not perform county road maintenance without written approval from Lake County Public Works and operators must carry said approval with them when performing such approved activities. Number nine, commercial operators shall furnish a general liability policy with a minimum of a million dollar coverage per occurrence with Lake County listed as an additional insured. Number 10, commercial operators must carry a copy of any applicable permits listed above during tours and other business operations. Number 11, permits are subject to unscheduled field inspection. Number 12, permits must strictly adhere to all regulations and conditions of approval. Non-compliance may result in review and enforcement measures with the potential of revocation for non-compliance. Number 13, permits are not assignable without the advance written consent of the Board of County Commissioners. Permit approval criteria. All actions by the Board of County Commissioners in approving, approving with conditions, or disapproving commercial recreational permit, recreation permits shall be based upon the provisions of this ordinance and specifically on the following criteria. Number one, that the proposed permit shall not likely be detrimental to the public health, safety, or welfare of county residents and other recreational users. Number two, that the proposed permit shall not result in an overly intense use of county roadway relative to the condition of the roadway and or existing volume of use. Number three, that the proposed use will not result in traffic congestion or hazards to vehicular or pedestrian traffic. Number four, the proposed permit has provided an acceptable emergency management plan. Number five, the proposed permit demonstrates that natural and man-made hazards can and will be adequately mitigated. Enforcement, show cause hearing, revocation. Commercial permit violations may result in a show cause public hearing based on evidence that the permit is non-compliant pursuant to these regulations or any conditions of approval. The permit administrator shall first make a reasonable effort to resolve any permit non-compliance. If such effort is not successful, the permit administrator may schedule a show cause hearing with the Board of County Commissioners. The show cause hearing is a public hearing process under the jurisdiction of the Board of County Commissioners. The permit administrator shall provide the substance of the hearing by introducing the evidence which constitutes a violation of the conditions of the permit or this ordinance along with proof and effort was made to resolve the issue administratively. The permit holder or their designee may provide evidence and testimony regarding the complaint. The Board of County Commissioners shall allow for comment relevant to the substance of the hearing from the public. If after the public hearing, the Board of County Commissioners determine there has been a violation of the conditions of approval or this ordinance, then the permit may be suspended for such period as determined by the Board of County Commissioners. The Board of County Commissioners may also revoke the license if it finds the violation has not been cured despite advance written notice by the permit administrator of the need to do so, or if the violation threatens the safety, health, and welfare of the community. Upon revocation, the commercial permit holder may not reply, reapply for a permit in the same location for a period of two years from the date of the revocation of the permit. Section 
for applicability. The ordinance shall apply to all county roads of Lake County, Colorado. Section five, effects of ordinance. Any person <coughs> cited for violation of this ordinance in the unincorporated areas of Lake County may be prosecuted before the Lake County Court pursuant to the provisions set forth in section five and six of this ordinance. The adoption of this ordinance shall act to rescind Lake County Ordinance 1202, Ordinance 2301, and Lake County Resolution 1013. Section 6 penalties, general OHV use. Violations pertaining to general OHV use shall be subject to applicable provision of Lake County's adopted model traffic code. Commercial OHV use. For a first offense, there will be a minimum fine of $200 imposed on any person or persons who violates any provision of Section 3 of this ordinance. For a second offense, there will be a minimum fine of $750 imposed on any person or persons who violates any pro provision of Section 3 of this ordinance. A third offense will result in permanent revocation of all permitting listed in Section 3 imposed on any person or person who violates any provision of Section 3 of this ordinance. Such fines shall be assessed on the commercial operator and based on the total number of recreational users involved to include both guides and customers. Citations. Law enforcement officers may issue citations to any person or persons or representatives of commercial operators suspected of having violated this ordinance. In instances where a violation has been witnessed and reported, a law enforcement officer is authorized to issue a citation to the violator. Citation shall include the following information. Number one, the offense for which the person or representative of a commercial operator is being cited per this ordinance. Number two, the specific location of the violation. Number three, the date and time of the suspended, suspected offense if witnessed or the date discovered by the law enforcement officer. The date, time, and location where the cited person or representative of the commercial operator is to appear before the Lake County Court and the name and legible signature of the officer issuing the citation. Section 7, liability. The adoption of, this, of the ordinance codified in this document shall not create any duty to any person, firm, corporation, or any other entity with regard to enforcement or non-enforcement of this ordinance. No person, firm, corporation, or other entity shall have any remedy against the Lake County Board of County Commissioners or Lake County Sheriff, their officers or agents for any damages arising out of or in any way connected with the adoption, enforcement, or non-enforcement of this ordinance. Nothing in this ordinance shall be construed to create any liability or to waive any of the immunities, defense, limitations on liability, or other provisions of the Colorado Governmental Immunity Act, Section 2410-101, Colorado Revised Statute, or to waive any immunities of defense or limitations on a liability otherwise available to each entity, agency, government body, its officers, employees, and agents. Section 8, Safety, the Lake County Board of County Commissioners has determined that adoption of this ordinance is in the best interest, safety, and welfare of the citizens of and visitors to Lake County. Section 9, Severability, if any section, subsection sentence clause or phrase of this ordinance is for any reason held to be unconstitutional, such decision shall not affect the validity of the remaining portion of this ordinance. The Lake County Board of County Commissioners hereby declares that it would have passed this ordinance irrespective of the fact that any one or more section, subsection, sentences, clauses, and phrases be declared unconstitutional. Section 10, recording that the Lake County Clerk is hereby ordered that this ordinance is to be introduced, read, and published in full. Um, it was read on the 11th day, first on the 11th day of January, and the ordinance was published in full in the Herald Democrat General Circulation newspaper published in Lake County on January 18th, and the public hearing is ordered for January 6th. February 6th. February 6th. February 6th. And it's read today. And yes. it's read today. Yes. Okay. Not January 11th. Right. Okay. So, correct. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So I think if I have it right, the motion for us today is to approve the public posting of that public hearing for Ordinance 24-01. Uh, um, um, I'll move to approve the posting of the drafted Ordinance 2401 and set and publish the public hearing date for February 11th at 11 o'clock. February 6th at 11 o'clock. So That's my motion. Is that covered? Or second. Second, sorry. Okay. 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 
All right. Okay. Any discussion, comments, questions before we vote? No, not for me. I think that covered all of it. Uh, I have a tiny grammar thing for or from, but that can, I don't know if that's new or later. We can, I think we, we can, can handle that. that last, so, yeah. and that's especially if it's yeah. just a form yeah. of typo. I think, yeah. I think it, I just, yeah, just sort of yeah. hammer home the prohibition. Okay. Um, yeah, nothing else from me. Thank okay. You. Then okay. call for a vote on the motion on the table. Aye. 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 The motion is approved. Nice cool. work, Anne. Thank right. you. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> One more thing off your list. Yay. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. I think we just have the consent agenda, which just has the January 12th payroll on it. I'll move to approve the consent agenda. <laughs> I'll second. Okay. No further discussion. No further discussion. Thank me either. Great. And uh, then we can go for a vote. Aye. 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 The consent agenda is approved, and with that, um, at 12.35, we can adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.